it, it kind of relates to something that's been been talked a lot about a lot more recently among scholars who study rhetoric and writing, which is um, this term "Internet of Things." Right. Right. And so it's something we're circling around as we're talking about materiality. Um, that's talked about as re- within rhetoric. Internet of Things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, starting people are starting to talk about it. Um, and you know, it's from geolocation apps to wearable technologies, passive sensing devices, smart appliances, machine learning algorithms. Um, but this focus on the agency of technologies is in some ways a little bit jarring for people who study writing and study rhetoric because it's yeah. been so human centered. Um, and it's always been really interested in the agency of student writers, of rhetors, of people who, who do things with language. Um, so more and more now it's the actions of things and not people that we're focusing on. Right. So as we think about that materiality, um, that that causes us to ask questions. Maybe we've been a kind of humanistic centered field, but focusing now in a more post-human direction. Yeah, totally. um, but I was interested in your work because it seems that you start with this kind of post-human medium of data, or we think of it as post-human, but um, there's this incredibly important role of the personal in your work, yeah. almost autobiographical. Um, and I just, I just wanted to ask how you see the personal um, changing. Um, in 2015, what it means to be, to focus on the personal in a time that's considered more post-human, or yeah. in an internet of things. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's great because it's a, I think there's a real question, there's a real kind of uncomfortable aspect mm-hmm. to that. Like, as a society, we're like trained in such an ego-centered way, and like, you know, artistic practice is such a... Uh, you know, ego-centered thing, you know, the, I mean, the idea of the individual producing, like, the, you know, clever, beautiful artwork or whatever is still ingrained in anyone's head that, uh, you know, makes art or music, you know, as a, as a career, no matter how far we get kind of conceptually away from those ideas, you know, and try to, like, tear that down and critique that and whatever, but it's so embedded in, you know, the way we think as a society, as a consumer, a capitalist, uh, society like that is it, it, the individual has you know such a uh, a presence that's hard to get away from but you know all these forces yeah are are, are th- like no longer accountable for you know within like the model where the individual is autonomous and mm-hmm. you know totally subjective and totally the focus of these things and so of course that comes out in the in the work Mm -hmm. Um, you know something like quotidian record where I'm interested in data I'm interested in how people move in cities I'm interested in how the city like structures the you know kind of rhythmic identity of uh, everyday life you know how how you know in that case like how you know New York has made me in a particular way Um, how about that yeah, I'm interested in these things on how, like, you know, the, the, the city structures my everyday life or technology structures everyday life or, you know, the way internet interfaces are constructed, like, get into your actual kind of physical patterning. You know, the mm-hmm. fact that uh, the gesture of, like, head down looking at your phone is, like, instantly recognizable, you know, as a particular pose for a particular action, you know, that's interacting uh, with a particular kind of media, mm. you know, it's physically inscribed. It has it has a, a, a presence in our in our bodies. You know, whatever uh, you know, interface aesthetics like aside, like these things are are gesturally real. Um, so yeah, so a piece like Quotidian Record, I wanted wanted to explore that. Uh, you know, again, looking at like the material aspects of it, putting it in a vinyl record because that's, you know, something physical. But it is focused on me. It is autobiographical. And part of that's because I have access to that. There's a pragmatics to, Mm -hmm. you know, if you want to instrument a person and explore different ways of generating data, you know, that's easier to do with yourself as a subject, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, You know, you can... You can talk about big data through small data. Um, I can look at these intensely, you know, personal data sets. 
Nick Felton is another person who does that, you know, very well, who, who gathers a lot of data on himself, you know, to reflect about the role of data and design and self in general. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it has to start, uh, start there, but, you know, maybe it's pointing at these, these, you know, larger, uh, these larger questions. So yeah, so post, so post human, right, when we get to these Internet of Things, when we get to systems that are working on their own, uh, you know, they have, like, yeah, their own biases and all these things. Um, yeah, I think, I think it, you know, it's a contingent or a contentious question mm -hmm. as to how the self comes into that. Um, Maybe it's a matter of like producing little frictions, you know, where that does become uncomfortable. Uh, when you think about Internet of Things in the commercial world, you know, things that are advertised, you know, whether it's like the thermostat, thermostat stuff or the, the wearable stuff, mm -hmm. the idea is that it's all kind of seamless and easy, right? You know, the way like uh, Apple marketing works or you know, whatever, these things are supposed to be uh, very fluid, very lightweight, you know, non-obtrusive, mm -hmm. and like, you know, non-structuring. They're supposed to make these things, you know, easy for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's the marketing, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Like the, the reality of that, like I said, with, you know, the, that gesture of looking down, you know, at your hand as you hold these things, like they... They are obtrusive. They are they are forming. They are you know they change who you are as a person. They're they're prosthetics mm -hmm. that you know enable you to do certain things and also you you know restrict the way you do certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I used to navigate without any kind of <laughs> map or whatever. Now I can't like get to the store down the street without like looking at you know Google Maps. Like so they they, they become um, a part of you and then they're not seamless. You know they fail. They have friction. Like there's the loading bar that happens, like they don't, you know, boot up on time. You know, I was just traveling in Africa, like satellite connections there like go in and out and it prevents you from doing certain things. Like there's there's all the this friction uh, in interacting with these systems that, you know, certainly commercial marketing doesn't want to emphasize. Mm -hmm. Um, but in making work that kind of focuses on that those friction points and maybe celebrates it in some ways and maybe, you know, criticizes it in other, you know, other ways, but, but has the focus on, like, you know, where, where that rubs together. Mm -hmm. I think that's of, you know, certain value or interest or... Yeah, yeah. You know. 